Hey guys, it's Apon here. Today we're going to make a simple music box with the Raspberry Pi. All you do is turn it on and music will start playing. The green button will pause the song. The red button will skip to the next song. And we also get to use the volume dial that comes with the speakers. This setup is pretty simple. We have two buttons, a mini breadboard, and two wires for each of the buttons. I'm going to start by taking the green button, putting it on the right side. This is going to be our pause button. And then I'm going to take our red button and put it on the left side. And that is going to allow us to skip the, the song. As far as the wiring is concerned, this has a very nice symmetric setup. I'll hook up the green wires to the green button and the red wires to the red button, of course. And then, instead of hooking up to the Pi directly, I'm going to feed the wires through the cover. So because I'm using a mechanic kit, I can uh, put the wires through these holes here. And that'll allow us to put the case on, I mean the cover on the case, and have the wires just go straight through it, which is not technically necessary, but it's a cleaner finish. And when it comes time to put the wires on, as I promised, it is a symmetric setup. So I am looking for the third and fourth wires closest to me on both sides. And I can actually get the order mixed up, it doesn't matter. Which is kind of cool, because it's a button, so whether the current flows one way or the other, as long as that current is completed, we're going to be able to pick up on that as the button being pressed. So it doesn't matter which direction it flows. And then I can put the cover on. And that's what that looks like. I have one more thing I want to do, and that is I just want to put a little label on each button. And voila! I just cut some file folder labels to size and stuck those on the buttons. Of course this step's optional. Alright, on the Pi side we need two things to happen. Of course we need music to play, so just put whatever mp3s you want to cycle through in the music folder. And I made a directory called fun, because this is, and I put the musicplayer.py uh, Python script in that folder. This script is available to you on my GitHub page, which is linked in the description. I'm not going to spend too much time on it here, but the gist of it is that this handles all the logic for looping through the songs in the music directory, and sets the buttons up to correspond to pausing and skipping, assuming that you're using the same pans as I am for the buttons. Much of this is powered by the Mixer class from the Pi Game library, which I found to be incredibly helpful to gain full control over the soundtrack. So at this point, we can just run the script, and if the mp3 files are in the folder, it should just work. So if I pull up a terminal, go in my fun directory, and say Python 3 Music Player, it will start playing music. And you can see that I've got the print statements in my script. So it's, it prints if it's pausing, prints if it's unpausing, and it prints if it's skipping to the next song. And if you skip through all the songs, eventually it will exit. Bye, thanks for listening. So what we need to do now is move away from all the peripherals. So right now, this is really no different than if I had just gone and double-clicked on the files and just played them on the computer. Uh, what we want to do is to be able to get rid of the keyboard, the mouse, and the monitor and make this portable. So that's the next step. In order to go from this to this, we're going to need to tell our Pi to run our script automatically when it starts up. To do this, we're going to use the built-in job scheduler cron. We need to add a line after the comments, at reboot, python3, 
and then the path to the script. So this will tell the Pi that when it reboots, it needs to run the script that plays the music. There's one more thing we need to take care of. We need to go into raspi-config and do that as a super user, my bad. Select the first thing that comes up, which is system options, and then go to S5, which is boot slash auto login. If we pause and look at this, we have two options essentially. We have console versus desktop. Now, since we don't have a monitor plugged in, it doesn't make sense for the Pi to waste time and resources booting up the desktop GUI. So we are going to choose console, and of the two options, we are going to choose auto login. So when we boot it up, it will log in for us automatically, and then the cron job tells it to run our script on reboot. And hey, while you're in here, go to S2, which is audio, and make sure that the audio jack is selected and not HDMI. This took me a long time to figure out as I was debugging my script. So when you reboot, you should get exactly what I showed you in the beginning of the video. Now there are distributions that are devoted to turning your Pi into a jukebox. And so if you want the very best musical experience, you should probably go with one of those. The motivation for doing this project for me um, came from my friend Gene. Thank you, Gene, for the suggestion. Gene was trying to build a music box for her 94-year-old mother. So in that case, you might want something that is really simple, which is why I just set it up to turn on the button and play music. You know, we don't have to worry about streaming services and getting anything hooked up. It's just, it just works. So that might be an application for something like this to just sort of keep it simple. Um, but certainly there are people who have done really fancy stuff uh, with the Pi and with music. And so definitely do check out those distros. I also want to say too that there were a lot of different components that had to work together, if you think about it, to make this happen. And so if you want to sort of up your Pi skills, this is a really great project to try. Um, you know, there's hooking up the components, which in this case are just two buttons, but then there's writing code to get those buttons to work. There's writing code to get the music to play and to stop and to skip. There's getting the Pi to run in a headless state and getting the Pi to do something on reboot automatically without you telling it to run. And so, um, and also going into the Raspi config and having a look at those settings is worthwhile as well. So. I hope that uh, you guys found those steps valuable. I think that they can apply to many different projects. Um, and yeah, I hope you had fun. I definitely did at making this, so as always, thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.